I tell you in all honesty, I missed you last week. I did. I did. I had an assignment. I was away. I got up in a revival for Pastor Martin's church. Now, I'm going to be tactful how I say this because they may be watching online. It, it was an honor, and, and I was humbled to be able to speak at that conference, at the at their revival. Um, I told Pastor Mark, I said, why are you including me? The speakers you have with Dr. Ryan Jackson, with Jeff Dale, I said, that's a home run hitting lineup, and you're putting me up there. I just must need to hit a single, get on base, and then let them hit me in. But I missed you guys. Can I tell you, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. The way you guys worship, the way you guys receive the word, I am honored and humbled to be your pastor. I am. Uh, there's no place like home. Happy Palm Sunday. You know today's Palm Sunday? Passion Week. We're getting ready to head into the foundation, the cornerstone of our faith, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I was away from you guys, so I'm ready to preach right now. I'm ready. But we got some announcements. We got some announcements, and we're going to get into a time of worship. Tonight at 5 here in the sanctuary, there will be a spe special financial peace class. Now, everyone is invited. So even if you've not come to the class during the, during the regular rotation of it, you're invited tonight. There'll be a guest speaker, uh, Joey Maples from Edward Jones Financial. He's a financial advisor with them. He'll be here tonight, and he'll give you some great financial advice, I'm sure. That's not my pay grade. Pastor Chris cannot give you any good financial advice other than tithe, and the Lord will bless you. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. That's, that's about the best I can give you. In our Easter extravaganza, thank you guys for coming out yesterday. I'm just joking. We didn't have it yesterday. <laughs> I saw some of your faces. I did. It will be this com oh, Miss Jeannie. <laughs> it will be this coming up Saturday. This coming up Saturday, same time, one to four. We we didn't change the time. Time same. So it'd be on the thirtieth. But we postponed it, which was a great move because obviously you know it rained and it was cloudy. I saw some other churches that still had doors when I rode by, and I prayed for them. Lord, hold off the rain, and He didn't. But that's okay because the pollen's out in the air now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So. We'll have ours next Saturday, 1 to 4. Hot dogs, fellowship, fun. We'll have a great time. Come out and be a part of that. Uh, I just encourage you. That's, that's going to be a great event for us. Um, nursery workers. Some of you guys, you, you listened to me the other Sunday, and I'm glad as your pastor, I'm going to beg you again. We need nursery workers for Easter Sunday. For Easter Sunday. Now I know you're saying, Pastor Chris, I want to be in here. And you can be. Now, it might be a Sunday where you have to work in one and worship in the other, but that's okay. But if you can, if you can get, be a part of our nursery, we would, we would gladly appreciate it because there's going to be some families come in. They're going to have young kids they need to drop off. I told you the other week, I don't want them to come in and say, man, the service was awesome. The worship was good. The event you had during Easter was good. The preaching was okay. But now the nursery we lacked. We lacked in the nursery. I don't, I don't want that. So, guys, if you will volunteer. But it's, it's just for that hour of that service. Volunteer. To help us out with that because as you can see our church is growing and as we grow more young people are coming in and as more young people are coming in that's more people we have to disciple you realize that's our next generation of Christians right that, that, that's the next church so it's important so if you can if you can volunteer for that even if it's just for that one Sunday now I'm gonna pray if you volunteer and you like it you'll get with sister Leanne and you'll get on rotation but even if it's just that one Sunday come out and be a part of that could come out and serve that that one Sunday will you please stand we have several other announcements on our online avenues. We have, so, we have an app. We have Facebook. We have so many different things that we, we have announcements on. So, so check our announcements out. We have a lot more uh, other things going on. How many of you are excited to be in God's house today? Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited to see one another today? Yes. Yeah. That's what church is all about. We come in here and we can fellowship with like-minded believers. We can come in here and we seek an almighty God. We have a relationship with him. And if you don't, I hope by the time you leave the day that you have that relationship with him. But it's the importance of a church family. It's the importance of a church body. There's been so many needs this week texting me, so many things going on. And can I just tell you, we, a lot of things you guys don't see behind the scenes. You don't. But we have an awesome church family. We do. We have a given church family. We have a church family who's willing to serve one another, help one another out. And there's so many needs, so many calls with bad doctor's reports this week. So many people diagnosed with cancer, stage four cancer, stage three cancer, just so much going on. But we serve a God. I, I love the but. But we serve a God despite the situation you're facing, he's in the midst. Despite the circumstances in your life, He's there. I, I promise He is. You may not feel Him. You may not see it, but He's working. Yes, 
And he's working all things out for your good and his glory. That's what his word tells us. So I know some of you today may have come in just heavy laden. Perhaps you come in, come in burdened. By uplifting the hand, do you have a need in this place today? If we're honest, we all do. If, if we're honest, we're all, none of us want to hear a bad report. But can I tell you, the doctor's report is not final. It's not. The, the report your husband or wife got, it, it's, it's not final. The report your best friend at work got, it's not final. It's not. God has the final word of any report that we can be given. And I know he's still a miracle working God. I know he is because I've seen his hand work in my life. I've seen his hand work in your life. And we're going to find out today that we can still receive life at a dead place. And for some of you, you're there today. You're in a dead place. You're, you're in a tomb of misery. You're in a tomb of sorrow. You're in a tomb of hurt. But there is one by the name of Jesus Christ. And when he shows up on the scene... Things change. Things that were once dead now become alive. So will you pray with me today over the needs of this church family? Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your great and your many blessings. Father, we exalt you in this place. For you and you alone are worthy of all praise. Father, we don't come in this place today to look good. We don't come in this place today to see who's here and see who's not here. Father, we've come in this place today to worship you in spirit and to worship you in truth. We've come in this place today to worship, Father, to lift our hands to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we've come in here today to hear a word from your word because your word is alive and it is active and it is well. So, Father, I thank you for every person who's come in this place today. I don't know the struggles they had to get here, but you do. I don't know what they faced this week, Father, but you do. And they're in your house. They're here with your people. And, Father, I know you'll honor that. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Christ, I lift every need in this place up to you. Every need in this place, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, whatever it may be, I lift it up to you in the name of Jesus, because at the name of Jesus, it is the name above every name. It is the name that we can come to in our time of need. It's the name that we can come to just when we want to rejoice and lift our hands. So Father, right now, in that mighty matchless name of Jesus, I pray for your people. Father, I pray for this service that we're about to go into. Father, give us a heart of worship. Father, give us a heart of worship in this place. We thank you, Father. We honor you, Father. We love you. We exalt you for who you are and what you mean to us. Thank you, Father, for giving us life and life more abundantly. In the name of Jesus Christ, we offer up this prayer. Father, let it be done. Let it be so according to your will, your purpose, and your perfect plan. In Jesus Christ's holy name, and his people said, Do me a favor, church. Do me a favor. Shake some hands, hug some necks. And at any time during our praise and worship, if you feel the liberty to come at this altar and worship, come up here and worship. Don't hold back today. Don't hold back. good to be in God's house today. And I hope you've come to worship the Lord today. He is worthy of all praise. this morning, I just want you to think about something. You know, today is Palm Sunday. And I just want you to think, could you envision the Father 
Could you envision your father or even you turning to your son or your daughter and telling them the only way that I know that I can redeem my people is for me to allow you to leave heaven's throne and to take on flesh and to die for my people. Just imagine what that could have been for Jesus when he heard that. To leave heaven's throne. Maybe sometimes we have to leave the comfort of our home. The comfort of what we know. And just walk in faith of knowing the Father has our steps for us. So today as we just worship on this Palm Sunday as we worship and we sing and we open up our hearts and our minds to God today let's think about that sacrifice that he made to sacrifice his son and we've come to worship him today and so as we just open this time of worship let's just adore him with everything we have let's just let everything else fall away that all the bad news that you might have heard or your phone calls you might have received this week God, we just let it fall away, if only for a moment, dear God, so that we can focus on you, the one true and living God. We give you glory and we give you honor, Lord. We lift our praise to you. Let's worship, church. for today church so here I am to worship here I am Oh, 
Cause I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken And I'm accepted You were condemned But I'm alive and well And your spirit is within me Because you died and rose again Aren't you glad for his amazing love today? church you're my king forgiven by the blood of the lamb amen give him a hand clap of praise but because we've been forgiven and because his blood was shed on the cross today i don't know what you came in bound with today but there's a spirit of freedom in his house today so he wants to set you free from whatever you have today so let's just give it to him once like a bird in prison i dwell
Amen. If you want to be set free today, just give him a hand clap of praise. Lord, we just give you it to you today. All our pain, all our infirmities, God, we give it to you today. And we just ask that you set us free, dear God. Lord, from all those trials and tribulations, dear God, let us know that you are with us and for you there is freedom and freedom everlasting, dear God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for your worship. Thank you for your freedom to allow the Holy Spirit to just minister. God, we just give you glory for this day and we give you honor and continue to have our hearts and minds open to you today as we receive the word from Pastor Chris today. Amen and amen. You may be seated today. And just tell your neighbor that I'm set free in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm a little torn this morning. All week I had planned on teaching this sermon, but the way you guys have worshipped, I think I just need to go ahead and preach it. I don't think I need to teach it. I think I need to preach it. But thank you for your, I know Brother Jonathan said it, but thank you for your worship. That sets the tone for our services. It does. The way you worship God so freely, it sets the tone. Thank you for being here. You could have been any other place doing any other thing, but you chose to be here. And God has a plan for you because you've come. There's a word for you today. Maybe it's perhaps through song. Maybe it's through something that somebody spoke to you before service or after service. Or maybe it's something from the message. But there's a word for you today that God wants you to have. He, there is. There's a word in this house he wants you to have. So I'm thankful you're here. And those online, thank you for being here. I, I was out last week and I came up to some and was shaking hands and said, Hey, nice to have you. It's your first time. They said, No, we were here last week and you won't. I said, well, you know what? Hey, that, I, get, I got it. But church, tell them it's their second time back. What are they? Family. Your family. Your family. We are glad to have you in this place. We are. We love God. We love people. We just simply want to be a life-giving, life-changing, transforming church. That's what we want to be. We want to see people that's far from God become close to God and grow in a relationship with Him and get into discipleship classes and really mature their faith and then go out and spread the gospel and bring others in. That's all. All we want to do is what the Bible tells us to do. That's it. No magic formula or nothing. We just want to love God and love people. So thank you for being here. And can I just start out by saying this? Can we give Sister Angel a hand for last week? A phenomenal job she did. I, got, I watched both services and j j just an outstanding job. Very proud of her and how far she's came. And she told me, she said, Pastor Christian, I'm an evangelist and I really wanted to let go, but God wouldn't let me. I said, well, you've done the right thing. You listen to God, not yourself. And so I was extremely proud. What, what an awesome word she brought last week about carrying our cross. I mean, really an awesome on-time word. So I'm thankful. Guys, you might not understand it, but you're blessed with a great staff at this church. Amen. You are. Yes. You're blessed with a great board at this church. I, really, you are. And I'm honored to, to be your pastor. I am. It, it's, I, I just love you guys so much. So we're in a sermon series titled, The Resurrected Life, Come Alive. Tell your neighbor, come alive. come alive. Yeah, yeah. So if you missed two weeks ago, this is where we started at. I came from Luke 7. We talked about revival at a funeral. Did you know that the Lord can make a revival take place at a funeral? Oh, and, and he did in this passage, he did. A young man had died in the city of Nain. He had died, and the same day he died, they were going to bury him, which was custom to do. So they were on their way to the grave, and the funeral happened to run in to Jesus. The procession met a parade. There was two different crowds. There was a different alignment going on. Jesus had just performed a miracle, and some followers of his were coming up a mountain. The family of the deceased young man was going down a mountain. You know, sometimes we get caught in dead things. We're, we're going down but Jesus wants us, us going up. And so them, them, them paths crossed. And did you know that even when paths cross like that, that death has to lose its grip when it comes in front of Jesus? Oh, it does. It has to lose it. And we saw that. We saw that. And that. But not only that, there was, a, there was an alteration. After the alignment, there was a mother's grief. She was hurt. She was broken. Obviously, it said she was a widow. So she had lost her husband at some point. And now the Bible said she had lost her only son. But did you know the mother's grief was no match for the master's grace? It wasn't. When Jesus Christ came on the scene, he shifted and turned things around. And then not only that, he went up to the coffin and touched the coffin. And the boy came up at his command. Jesus didn't have to touch the boy. He didn't have to touch the mama. He touched the situation around him. And when he touched the situation, it affected everyone that was in that situation. And that's what he can do for us. He can just touch our situation, and it touched multitudes of people. 
And we saw that two weeks ago. And then the final point was the aftermath. Because of what the people saw, because of what they heard, there was fear initially that set in, but then faith overcome fear. And it showed that because then it said they went and they spread the gospel, not just in their city, not just in their church, not just in their house, but they spread the gospel throughout the surrounding cities, communities. They didn't just spread it in Benson. Guess what? They went to Coates, Dunn, Irwin, Four Oaks, Meadow, McGee's. They went all over and said, hey, there's a man named Jesus, and this is what he's done. There was a dead man he's brought back to life. And so that was two weeks ago. I don't want to re-preach it. That was two weeks ago. So today I want to look at this. I want to look at receiving life in a dead place. Receiving life in a dead place. And we're coming from John 11. John 11. And this is a story you're very familiar with, I'm sure, of a man named Lazarus. A man named Lazarus. we will be verses 39 through 45. And this is what God's Word says. Jesus said, take away the stone. Some of us have stones in our life that are hindering us that we need removed. Jesus said, take the stone away. Then, he, then Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an offensive odor, for he has been dead for four days. The Amplified says she said it is hopeless. Sometimes we can get in dead situations and they seem hopeless. But Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of of God, the expression of his excellence. So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes towards heaven and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always heard me and listened to me, but I have to say this because of the people standing around me. There were so many unbelievers around him. May, and he said, so that they may have know that you have sent me and that you are and that I am your uh, representative. Listen to what he says here. When he had said this, he shouted out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He called him by name. He didn't say dead man come out. He didn't say my friend come out. He called him by name. Did you know the dead situations you're in? The Lord knows your name in that situation. And when he calls your name, you have no choice but to, to come out. So Lazarus came out. He said, he said, out came the man who was dead. His hands and feet were tied and wrapped in burial clothes, which were linens. His face, a burial cloth, was wrapped around it. And he said, Jesus said to him, unwrap him and release him. Unwrap him and release him. So then many of the Jews who had came to be with Mary and who were eyewitnesses of this saw what Jesus had done, and they believed. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom, knowledge, and truth that your word has, that, Father, it is here for us. If we just take time to get in it, if we just take time to study it, Father, if we just take time to meditate on it and apply it to our lives, Father, it would do us so much good. Thank you for your word. Father, I pray now for any distractions or hindrances that will cause your word not to be received, Father, to be removed. I come in agreement with Brother Jonathan. There is a spirit of freedom in this house today. So, Father, I know your word will fall on good and fertile soil. But I still pray, Father, anything the enemy may try to bring against it, that you bind it and that you cast it out in the name of Jesus. Decrease me and increase you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the one true and only living God. And his church said, Amen. Amen. So when we talked about the young man two weeks ago in the city of Nain being raised, think about it. That was a same-day miracle. The young man had just died. The Bible don't say what time of day, but he had died the same day. And now the family was carrying him out to bury him. So for some, don't you think perhaps, perhaps there were still doubters? Perhaps there were still questions. How do we know this city's not tied in with this Jesus guy? They're not just playing a trick. How do we know this young man really even, even died? How do we know this Jesus really performed a miracle? So this resurrection of Lazarus is a lot different. Because the Bible made it clear that he had been dead for four days. He was dead. There's no doubt about it. He was dead. And his sister even said there's an odor starting to come out. So do you think it's possible that Jesus said, and I'm paraphrasing, I'll show them, I get it, I get it, same day miracle. Now I'll do the same miracle, but I'll wait four days. 
I'll make sure they know that Lazarus is dead. I'll make sure they know that he is gone. This is not a trick. This is not a joke. I'll make sure. And our society today is that way. They see a miracle take place. I don't know if I still can believe in God or not. How do I know the church is not just spreading that rumor because they want to, to build up their congregation? How do we know the church ain't just spreading that rumor because they want to, the pastor wants to pat his pockets? How, how do we know that Jesus is really performing miracles? Can I tell you this? That when people are truly in the presence of an almighty God and a miracle takes place, they have no choice but to believe. Amen. Now, I get it. I get it. It's hard to believe when you just hear it. When you hear of everybody else getting healed and you're not, it can be hard. When you're hearing of everybody else financially being blessed and you're not, it's hard. But then when the Lord shows up in your situation, when his presence invades your problem, and then all of a sudden you see his hand move when no other hand could possibly move, you have no choice then but to believe, well, God, it's definitely you. I know the doctor said this, but you have shown me this. I know this family's been torn for this long, but now they're, they're this. I know them brothers and sisters had not talked in years, but now look at them eating together because your hand has moved in this situation. So we have to understand this. Jesus had a purpose and a plan for why he did things. Amen. And we're going to look at it because it can be hard to understand. But he was close friends with Lazarus. The Bible makes it clear. He was close friends with Mary and Martha, the sisters. And they even ran to him at a certain time, we're going to get into, and told him, our brother is extremely sick. Jesus, we need you now. But can I tell you, our time is not always God's time. Our ways are not always God's ways. Our thoughts are not always God's thoughts. Because at the end of the day, he does things, what the Bible say, to glorify God. Because if he always, Jesus is not a genie in a bottle. Can I tell you, when troubles come our way, if we just take out that little bottle of prayer and we rub it, Jesus, I need you to answer it. That's not how he works. It's not. I, I know, well, Pastor Chris, he's always answered my, and I'm glad he's always answered your prayer. He's always answered my prayer, but it's been in his time. He's never always immediately answered my prayer because perhaps there are some things I need to go through so I can grow in my faith. Perhaps there are some things I need to go through so I can see his hand move and not want my hand that's moving. So God's timing is perfect. Somebody hear me today. You've been praying for a miracle that's not took place yet. You have. You've been in a dead situation for a long, long time. God, I don't see your hand. I don't see where you're at. I've prayed. I've sought. I've fasted. I've done everything your words told me to do. I still don't see the miracle. Can I tell you, friend, that's okay. God's timing is not your timing. And when he shows up, I promise you he brings things with him that then will make you understand. Now I see why that decision was made by him and not by me. But hear me well, church. We can receive life in a dead place. We can. I promise we can receive life in a dead place. Here's, here's the points for today. As we're looking at this event, let's remember this. God always has a purpose and a plan. Always. Always, always. First one is this. The passing of Lazarus. Sorrow and sadness had, had set in. Now, I know we didn't read this. I'm going to summarize this whole chapter, 1 through 45 for us. So we ain't going to have time to read it. But we know for a fact there was a diseased body. Lazarus was sick. Now, me just being curious and wanting to know, I started Googling and doing some research. I wonder what was wrong with old Lazarus. The Bible don't say. Did he have cancer? Did he have some kind of chronic illness that just lasted a long time? At the end of the day, you know what God told me? And I was doing some research, and I'm serious, just as plain as plain could be. It don't matter what his sickness was, I was his Savior. It don't matter why he died, I'm the one that rose him. We can get so caught up sometimes on things. Well, Lord, what was wrong with this brother? Well, why did he do that? Or this sister, why did she go? At the end of the day, it don't matter. God's the one who, who's in control. But his body was diseased because it made it clear that his sisters went to tell Jesus. He was diseased so bad that they ran to the one they knew could, could heal him. It didn't say they went to the town doctors. It didn't say they went to family and friends. It said they went to Jesus and said, Our brother is sick, the one whom you love. He's a good friend of yours. He's extremely sick. And because of that sickness, it was so bad that the diseased body went to a dead body. He actually died. We, don't, we, we know that because in the Bible, multiple people talk about it. Mary's talking about it. 
Martha's talking about it. Jesus has to talk about it to his disciples. And bless their hearts, they were so confused, he was trying to be tactful and said, look, Lazarus is asleep. I've got to go wake him up. And the disciples were like, well, if he's asleep, he'll wake up on his own. Jesus said, no, 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 you don't understand. He, he's dead. He's asleep, but he's a dead. Hey, I'm about to go so God can be glorified, and I'm going to raise him from the dead. Did, a, did you know as disciples of Jesus Christ, sometimes we can be hard-headed? Even as your pastor? Did, did you know sometimes God can tell us things? It's as plain as day. Well, but, but Jesus, they, they just tried to stone you there a couple of weeks ago. We really got to go back. And then one disciple said, well, let us go and die with Jesus because they're going to kill him. Right. Read the story. That's what he said. Sometimes as followers of Jesus Christ, we don't even understand who we're truly following. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is Alpha. He's Omega. He's beginning and end. In all, in all things come through him and flow through him. So when he said, I've got to go back, there shouldn't have been any questions. Well, Lord, we're going to follow you. I understand the chaos we just came out of, but I know if you're going back, then God's got a plan. I know if you're going back, then, then God's got a, got a purpose. And so Jesus had to tell him, hey, he's really dead. Not just that, he's been dead for four days. So I need you to go with me now. His body was starting to decay. The Bible makes it clear there was a stench. There was an odor. Pastor Mark used to like to use King James and say, it stinketh. I just can't do the King James language. I like to just say he was decaying. The body was rotten. Four days. Now, look, back then, they didn't do that. They did us. They didn't embalm them. They wrapped them in linens. They put some perfumes and spices, and they put them in a tomb. That tomb was made out of most time rock in the side of a mountain. You know, in that, over there in that part of the country, it gets hot, extremely hot. After four days, can you imagine how being a hot tomb, probably well over 100 degrees, I can imagine the body was starting to stink. I, there's no, nothing there to preserve it. So he had to tell them, hey, it's a diseased body. Now it's a dead body. But it's also a decaying body. But, there's the but again, church. Even though death had set in, even though sadness and sorrow was all around, Lazarus had passed. But can I tell you, when the presence of the Lord Come comes into a situation, things change. Things, yeah. The Savior showed up. Sadness and sorrow set in, but then the Savior showed up. Can I tell you today, some of you have been facing some things for a long time. You've been in a tomb for a long, long time. You don't have to tell me. I can discern it. I can see your faces during this message. Some of you have been stuck in situations, and they're starting to stink. I don't know it, but I know you've been in it. Can I tell you, your pastor, I've been in situations before, and they've started to stink. I've been in situations before spiritually where I've started to decay. Oh, I have. Spiritually, I was nowhere where I needed to be with God. I was a long ways from God. I was in a deep, dark place, a tomb, if you will. And spiritually, I was starting to rot. But then when the Savior showed up, when his presence came on the scene, there's some things he brought with him. I told you earlier, when Jesus finally comes, they, the sisters came. We beg you, Lord, come. Please come. Not now. Now's not the time. They went to him and said, I'm begging you. Your best friend's dying. But God's glory had to be revealed. Because, you know, if Jesus would have went right then, right there, and touched Lazarus and healed him, and he never died, all those people that witnessed it would have never believed. They wouldn't. So the situation you're facing today, you're struggling in it for a reason. Because God has a plan. Maybe it, when it gets you out of it, there's one that's going to be around, there's some going to be around you that's going to see that miracle and they're going to say, you know what? I believe. Amen. Because of what they faced, but how long they faced it, I believe. They kept praying through that situation. They kept showing up at church through that situation. They kept reading their Bible through that situation. They kept honoring God through that situation. His hand is now moved and I see it. I believe. So some of us are facing, it's not by chance that you're having doctor's appointments. There may be unsaved people in that lobby when you're in there for over an hour waiting Amen. Right. that you can witness to. There may be doctors and nurses that sit there that don't believe that you can witness to. I, I said this at his funeral, and I'll say it, I'll say it today in front of you guys. Brother Lefford, the last time I got to see him, when I went to the funeral home, I mean, to the, um, the hospital, can I tell you this, as bad and as weak as he was, 
with doctors and nurses walking all around. We prayed, and that brother lifted his hands. We prayed, and he was praising the Lord. It didn't matter the situation he was in. Yes, the doctors had given him a bad report. Yes, he was physically weak and sick. His body was diseased. But can I tell you, he still chose to praise the King of Kings. And Lord, right there in the hospital with doctors and nurses walking all around, and the door wide open, we didn't shut it. I have nothing to hide about my faith. He had nothing to hide about his faith. We were praying to an almighty God that we knew could heal him, and he did heal him. Brother Leffer is more alive today than he'll ever be. And can I tell you, your lost loved ones who were Christians born again, they're more alive today than they'll ever be. Because Jesus had a plan. But he had to clarify some things up when he came. He had to tell the girls, hey, I'm the resurrection and the life. Though you may physically die, you'll be more alive spiritually than you've ever been before. Can I tell you this? This may come as a shock to some of you. This outer body we have is just a shell. This isn't who we really are. Our soul, our spirit on the inside is who we really are. So that's where it comes from. I'm the resurrection and the life. Yet this physical body will decay. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there'll come a point in time where every one of us will take our last breath. We will. And if we don't, you know what, we'll take it together if we don't go individually. Because there's something called the rapture that'll take place. And we'll all go together. But Jesus told them, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. Even though physically I see Lazarus is dead, I got something in store. This was just setting up for what was to come. You, if you don't read it, you don't know. This event took place right before Palm Sunday. This event took place right before Jesus was going in Jerusalem. They were going to celebrate him then, but then they were going to crucify him later. So all this took place where he was setting an example. What's happened to Lazarus, you're going to see happen to me. Except when I come back, I'm not dying again. I'm going to send to the Father. I'll be alive forevermore, interceding for the saints. And so he had to have some clarity. He told the girls that. But even with his disciples, he had to have the clarity with them. He says, guys, you don't understand. I've got to go so people will believe. I've got to go so God will be glorified. But then he brought comfort. The girls were hurt. There was sad ache. Uh, there was heartache, there was sadness. And it even said in the Bible that all the Jews around, all the Jews around had came and were weeping with them. But can I tell you this? I love this part of the story. Martha had done and met Jesus before he came into the city. She ran back to the house to tell her sister, and it said in secret she told Mary, Mary the teacher, rabbi, has showed up. It said that Mary, even though she was right there getting condolences and getting comforted by all those people, she left and she ran to Jesus. She left from the condolences and went to the comforter. She went to the one she knew without a doubt what I'm facing he can handle. What I'm going through he knows. He brought comfort to her and then he brought comfort to all those around because that's who Jesus is. He's our comforter. But then he showed compassion. This is the part very few times in the Bible that we'll see Jesus showed his human side. He wept. He said, where is Lazarus buried? Because we know Jesus was 100% God and 100% man, correct? Man. And in this story, we see it take place right here at the same time. He shows his humanity with his tears that he weeps. But then he shows his deity when he raises Lazarus from the dead. But we see it here. He had compassion for the people. He wept with them. Can I tell you today what you're going through? If it hurts you, it hurts him. And I know sometimes we can get so caught up, well, I, I, I've got only about 10 prayers a day I can pray, and then there's a limit. Jesus had cut me off, and he don't care about my test coming up, or he don't care about my schoolwork, or he don't care about my city. Can I tell you, if it bothers you, right. it bothers him. Amen. There's no prayer too big or there's no prayer too small. Your heavenly Father wants to hear from you. He wants to communicate with you. He wants you to communicate with him. So all things you have, all things, give it to him. He cares about you making an A on your test. Now, you're going to have to study. You've got to do your part. But the Bible says he'll bring back things out of remembrance. And then what it said, if you do your part, I promise you, the Lord will do his. But he showed compassion. And because of all these things he brought with him, now the power of life come into a dead situation. And there are some things right here. Man, I, just being there in person had to be mind-blowing. A supernatural miracle took place. Amen. Do we know what a miracle is? It's when heaven touches earth. That's right. Come on. 
A, a miracle is when the supernatural invades the natural. It's when things with our human eyes we see we don't understand and we can only say, God, that was you. There's no way I could have been in this car wreck and flipped this many times and come out not hurt. God, that, that was you. There's no way I got that bad report and then showed up at the doctor two weeks later for surgery. And we don't need surgery. What are you doing here? Your body's is whole. That's a miracle. That's when heaven comes down and touches your situation on earth. And some things happened here in this situation. Man, it was so, so powerful. Bondage was removed. There was three bondages removed. Three bondages in this passage I read that were removed. The first one is this, the stone. The stone was a hindrance. It kept Jesus from getting in, but it kept Lazarus from coming out. Sometimes we have stones in our life, and the presence of God can't get in because the stone's there. The stone has got to be removed so Jesus can enter in that situation. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but some of you have a stone in your life, and you need to pray. You can't move it yourself, but God can move it. When you're trying to roll the stone yourself, you're wearing yourself out, you're getting tired, you're getting weak, when you really just need to be sitting back and saying, God, this hindrance is really blocking me, can you please remove it? God, I need your hand to push this out of the way because physically I can't. So the first thing removed was the stone. The second thing removed was the label. Lazarus had been labeled dead. Some of you have been given names in your life where the enemy has labeled you dead. He's labeled you worthless. He's labeled you all kinds of things that put you in a deep, dark, dead place. But when Jesus came to the tomb, he made it clear. He said, Lazarus, come out. He's telling some of you today, calling you by name, son, daughter of mine, come out. I've removed the stone. Now I need you to do something. You have to get up. And you have to come out. I understand there's things still wrapped around you. I understand there's still bondages holding you back. But I'm telling you in your situation, I need you to take a step and come out. The stone has been rolled away. Now I need you to get up and walk. Because when you get up and walk, I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to tell them to go and take the wrap off and take the bandages off. And then you're free. So the third thing removed was the grave clothes. Grave clothes were all around him. So even though the Lord had removed the stone, even though he had removed the label of death, Lazarus still was bound. Did you know you can be saved and still be bound by things in your past? Sometimes we think because we're saved that we're just going to live a perfect life. Sometimes we think, well, Lord, I must have done something wrong because I'm facing this. No, 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 no. Situations you have put yourself in will, will put you in bondage. But can I tell you this, when Jesus Christ shows up on the scene, he can remove every bondage, every hindrance, everything that's affecting you. So the stone was rolled away, the label was taken off, and then when Lazarus took the step to come out, Jesus said, unwrap him and release him. Some of you need to be released from the things that's holding you back today. You do. And this is, you know what, this is the beauty of it. This is where your brothers and sisters of the faith come in. It didn't say Jesus went up and released him. Jesus told the people that. He said, go and unwrap him and release him. That's the importance of having a church family. Jesus should show up on the scene, and he'll take care of some things, but then he's going to lead you to a place like this, which is called an altar, which is a very sacred, holy place in a church. It's a place that we can come, and I know without a doubt today during praise and worship, thank you for coming up here. Some of you came to worship, but some of you came because you needed a touch from the Lord. But can I tell you, he'll take a place like an altar. And I'm in bondage, Lord, I've been in bondage all week. If I can just get into church, if I can just get around brothers and sisters of the faith, if they can just lay their hands on me to help unwrap what I'm facing. Some of you have been there and you know what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you, he'll use other people, other believers, to unwrap bondages in your life. I'm thankful for this church body right here. You guys worship. You guys pray. You guys receive the word. I'm thankful for what you do because you don't know during the week what people are facing. Amen. I'm telling you, just a smiling face and a handshake goes a long ways. I, oh, it does. I promise it does. Just a hug from somebody goes a long ways. Can I tell you, when COVID hit this church, a lot of people in this church just flat out didn't know what to do. I can't get my hug or handshake no more. And it was that way for months. This church loves each other. We do what the Bible tells us to do. We love each other. We care for each other. We connect with each other. We're concerned for each other. But because of the bondage being removed, belief was received. 
it said all those around this situation, all those around it, they believed. Amen. Could you imagine? Use your brains for a second. Could you imagine being in a hospital and a doctor coming up and saying, your loved one, it, he's passed. She's passed. Flatline. Nothing else we can do. And you start to just pray, God, I know all things are possible with you. And all of a sudden, that monitor that's flatline, there, there becomes a heartbeat. And all of a sudden, those oxygen levels that were decreased become increased. All of a sudden, that blood pressure that was bottomed out has now regulated. Can I tell you, there's stories like that that's really happened. Amen. Yeah, I'm, that, that's, I'm not making it up. That, it happens every day, matter of fact. God performs miracles every day. Sometimes they're small to us and sometimes they're big, but he's still a miracle-working God. But the greatest miracle he can work today is spiritually for you. Some of you are spiritually dead where you're at. Some of you are in a tomb of darkness and disbelief and discontent, and you don't know what to do. Lord, I've been here for so long, I'm really starting to stink spiritually. But Jesus Christ can come, and he can take that dead place and bring life out of it. So I don't know who I'm speaking here today. You may not even be in person. It may be somebody online. But spiritually, you're dead, and you need to meet a man named Jesus because he wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And it's not just a spiritual thing. Some of you physically are hurting. You have been in the cave, in the tomb of pain and suffering for a long time. Some of you mentally are there. The, the enemies attacked you mentally for far too long. Can I tell you, the day is the day to be released. The day is the day to be removed from the situation you're in. But, but you have to do like Lazarus. You've got to take that first step. If Jesus is calling you, if he's convicting you, if he's telling you to come forth, now's your time to take that step. There's nothing as a pastor I can do. I can't force you. I can't twist your arm. All I can do is tell you in your spirit, listen to the voice of truth. Listen to what Jesus is telling you to do. Will you bow your heads? Father, I don't know the hearts and minds of your people, but you do. You know the hearts and minds of your people. So, Father, right now, anyone in this place who is struggling spiritually, I beg them to come. Father, anyone in this place who is struggling physically, they're hurting in pain, I, I beg them to come. Father, anyone who is struggling mentally with doubt, with disbelief, with fear, with anxiety, with stress, with suicidal thoughts, whatever it may be, Father, I beg them to come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the one true and only living God, Father, let them come. Let them come to this altar and let them grab a hold of the horns. Father, let them get a hold of your presence. Father, let them come and let them say, I will not let go until I receive my blessing. Father, I'm holding on that tight because I'm tired of going through this life in dark places. I'm tired of going through this life in bondage. I'm tired of going through this life, Father, and not having that life and that life more abundantly. Today's the day that they can leave changed in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, let it be done, Father. Let it be so according to your will, your purpose, and your perfect plan. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God Because he lives
going to ask that you please stand. By the Lord still working at the altar, we're going to let, we're going to let them keep ministering, let the Lord keep working. I'm just going to ask you to be released and just believe reverently, if you will. Father, thank you for this day, your great many blessings. Father, thank you for your people. Father, thank you for those that responded, Father, for whatever situation. And they've came today and you've unwrapped and you've released them from some bondage in their life. I have no doubt, Father, that you've done that. So, Father, I pray for us as we leave in our separate ways, Father. I pray you keep us safe. I pray, Father, for our time of discipleship coming up, that we sense your presence in there like we have in here. And I pray in advance for a good second service as well. Father, we love you. We praise you and honor you. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen and amen.